back to You Heard It From ACFT. My name is Matthew Coyle. I'm the Director of Financial Planning here at ACG in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Thanks for joining me. It is June. It is beautiful. It's almost the 4th of July. We're going to do a very, very basic video on knowing your numbers. Now, I've been in this business now for over two decades, two decades plus, I guess 22, 23 years now. And the number one question I get, number one by far, I, there's no, it's not even close, is do I have enough? What do I need to hit my target? What do I need to retire? What do I need to at least maybe work less or work on my own terms so I can do what I want to do and not what I have to do? I get it. Maybe you're too bored, too old, too sick, too whatever to do your job anymore and you just want to go do what you want to do. What do you need to get that done? Let's talk about that. So let's talk about knowing your numbers. Now, depending on what your definition of comfortable income is, obviously if you prefer yacht racing and caviar tasting on the weekends as opposed to someone like me who prefers biking, running, walking, those types of things, your definition of our comfortable retirement will be very different, although I do like to travel. Um, let's talk about some basic mathematics behind what a portfolio will support and how long it will support that. And like I said, this is the question I get by far the most from everybody. You know, do I have enough? Am I saving enough? What do I need to save to? Because at some point, you do get too old, too tired, too sick, whatever, and you just want to get out of your job or you just want to be done. And look, I get it. I've talked to a lot of people for over two decades about this, and I understand we all have our reasons. All right, let's assume some variables. Now, obviously, we can argue about the variables. Obviously, everyone's going to be different. That's why they call it personal financial planning. Um, but I have to assume some variables that are reasonable for most people. And so first off, I'm going to assume that you retire at the age of 65. Why? Because that's when Medicare starts. And obviously, if you retire, retire before that, or let's say you go casual before that, perhaps, um, you're going to have some out-of-pocket medical costs. So just to make it easier on the assumptions, I'm going to assume 65 because that's the age of Medicare inception. Um, I'm also going to assume you can earn 6% on a portfolio, on a good balanced portfolio from age 65 to 90. And I'll get to that 90 number in a second. But that's 25 years, so 65 to 90, you should reasonably assume maybe a 6% return. I'm going to just go with that in the age of higher interest rates. I'm also going to assume that you start your Social Security at 67. Why is that? Because I've, done, I've run a lot of numbers in my life for plans, and I do realize that for most people around a half a million-ish or less, um, maybe 600,000 or less, I don't know exactly, but it depends on the situation. But um, for most of those folks, um, they're going to draw at 67, not 70, because the math works a little bit better on the livable income, and they don't draw their portfolios down so much in the early years. Um, so that's it. Now, the average, and I did look this up according to the Social Security Administration, SSA.gov, the average, and, and we're using averages here, okay, it's probably going to be a little bit higher in the urban areas, maybe lower in the rural areas, I don't know, but the average household earnings, in quotes, earnings, or let's say draw from Social Security is $2,739 as of the end of 2022. I don't have 2023's data, but the end of 2022, that's pretty close. So $2,739 per household. Now I'm just gonna round up and say 3,000 on that because um, most people probably in more developed areas might be a little bit higher than that. So let's just say 3,000. So those are the assumptions. We're gonna retire at 65. We're gonna inflation adjust everything at one and a half percent. You can use a higher or lower number. I'm just using something because I have to. Social Security at retirement age of 67, or sorry, full retirement age 67, full draw age. We're not taking into account where the money sits. We're just treating it as one large pot. And I do realize that obviously the IRS forces you to put money in different pots, right? And those different pots have different rules about how you can take things. And we can change and modify the draw order in a plan. And we usually do uh, run those scenarios for our client. You know, when do we take it from this account? When do we take it from this account? And that can stretch or limit your, your life. But I'm just going to assume it's one large pot because this is simple math. Um, so we're not going to take into account where the money sits. It's just a single pot. And of course, the income is a draw uh, from the portfolio that's pre-tax, okay? Because I don't know what your tax rate is. Um, everyone's a little bit different. We can all access parts of the tax code uh, in different ways, depending on what we're doing and what we're doing for a living and what our hobbies are and such like that. So, and whether your house is paid off or not. Um, so let's just assume it's a pre-tax draw. One half percent inflation, 6% earn, retire at 65, Social Security at 67, and $3,000 coming from Social Security at that age. So let's go over the different um, numbers and see what that results in a portfolio draw. All right, goal number one. Let's say you have $300,000 saved in your portfolio. Now I'm just talking about the portfolio, right? No extra income, not Social Security at this point, although I do assume it will be there. Um, let's say you have a $300,000 retirement balance. Let's say you want to live, you want to retire on that. You want to know exactly how much um, that will generate. Um, and again, all the assumptions I just gave you, 
for getting to age 90, which is the official certified financial planner board of standards requirement, unless the client requests otherwise, we always assume age 90. That's our, that's our kind of our standard assumption for a CFP planner. At $300,000, it will be a bit tight, but you could do it. You can do it with the assumptions I've laid out, assuming you retire at 65 and you draw at 67 years of security. That portfolio draw per month out to age 90, retiring at 65 will be 1,650 a month. You retire, you get to start your social security a little bit later, and you are getting the 1650 a month on the portfolio, and probably about three to 3,000, maybe 3,500 a month on social security. So starting at 67, you could be looking at about 4,650 a month. Now that, depending where you live, and depending on your situation, you certainly could do that. That's a, that's a livable income, even pre-tax, but it would be a bit tight. Okay, so 300,000 is doable with that particular uh, set of assumptions. At 400,000, your draw on the portfolio alone would be 2,200, and I'm rounding a little bit here just because you need to be, it's, I'm pretty close. Um, and I'm also rounding on the uh, age 90, so if I'm within a few months, I'll round up or down to 90. But at $400,000 portfolio, it's about a $2,200 a month draw, given the assumptions I've laid out. At a $500,000 portfolio, it's about a $2,800 a month draw. At $600,000, it's about a $3,300 a month draw, just on the portfolio. At seven fifty dollars on the portfolio, it's a $4,200 a month draw. At a million, it's five thousand five hundred, and at two million, it's eleven thousand one hundred. Now, those are just the raw numbers of how long a portfolio would last, given the assumptions that I have laid out. Okay. Again, you can argue about the assumptions, but again, I have to assume something. So that's the basic mathematics of how long a portfolio draw would last at those different metrics or those different balances, let's say. Um, starting with that, and of course, if you started Social Security at 67, and for most people. Let's say, unless you're a very uh, much more high asset uh, client, you're probably going to start your Social Security around, you know, 67. If you can wait till 70, great. But most people, if they're around, say, half million dollar retirement balance or less, they're probably going to take it at 67 because the mathematically that's the best thing for them to do. All right. So let's assume that you don't like those numbers I just gave you. It is just the math of it, and a portfolio draw at that return with that start balance over those number of years with those incomes will mean a zero portfolio balance by age 90. Now. If that's not enough, and I understand we all have our own uh, things we like to spend money on, there are a few things you could do that might make some small changes that might improve your situation. So this is what I typically look at when uh, I get the answer from a client that maybe that doesn't provide enough income. Here are a few options, and I've got them here. Maybe just four or five options to consider. Uh, if you're in retirement, that might add some longevity to your portfolio and keep you sane as well. Number one, um, did you know that if you add $500 extra per month of part-time income, which also kind of keeps you sharp in retirement, let's be honest. Um, $500 a month of extra income, starting with a $500,000 portfolio balance between the ages of 65 and 75. So let's say you work part-time, $500 a month, which isn't too difficult to find in most markets, between the ages of 65 and 75. Extra $500 a month, what does that add to your portfolio? That adds an extra five years. That takes you from 90 to 95. You increase that to $1,000 a month, and that will take you another nine, something like 9.4 years, somewhere, it's about nine years, just call it nine years. That's a big difference in a portfolio and it keeps you engaged in your community and keeps you feeling purposeful in maybe a job that, uh, maybe you're done working full-time but you still have a lot of energy and a lot of knowledge to pass on or maybe you wanna work part-time someplace and, and earn a little extra income. Oh, it doesn't take a lot, extra $500 a month, extra $1,000 a month, that's very doable for most people. And uh, it will add five to 10 years to your portfolio realistically. So that's option number one consider adding a part-time income. It's not too difficult to do, especially in this job market and this time when lots of employers, let's be honest, lots of employers, uh, good employers who are willing to pay want good help from people who want to provide it. So look at the uh, extra income option. It will, t it will keep you sane as well in retirement. You don't want to get bored. Uh, number two, consider a structured, some type, maybe type of a structured product or maybe a, a well-balanced uh, or well-built annuity product, commission-free of course, um, consider maybe, consider that in case of a, if you don't want to do a straight portfolio draw, consider maybe partially annuitizing your portfolio in a well-constructed annuity that might have, might have some caps to it, sure, but it might also have some guarantees, so consider that. Um, consider lowering your expenses by downsizing your home. This is one I run into a lot. I do run into people who have a lot of equity in their home, not necessarily realizing that what they've essentially done is put their equity into a 0% return asset. 
Your value of the house and your equity in the house are two different things. Your equity returns you nothing. Doesn't matter where you live and what market you're in, any, any market in the country, doesn't matter. Your home equity is a 0% return asset. Do you still need the 4,000 square foot house? Do you still need um, the home that is 3,500 square feet, 3,000 square feet? I don't know, it depends on your, on your lifestyle. If you don't have any kids in the home anymore and you don't think you need as large a house, maybe consider reallocating some of that home equity by downsizing and investing the difference. Um, I do run into a lot of people who just never consider this option. They just stay in their home. Um, and if you can separate some of that equity and still get live in a home that works for you, maybe consider investing some of that equity that isn't returning anything anyway. So consider downsizing if it's an option. Sometimes it isn't, I get that, but consider if it, if it is. Um, point of fact, an extra $100,000 reallocated to investment pool in that half a million dollar portfolio at that same $2,800 draw that I said earlier, adds 11 years to the portfolio, 11 years. That's a huge number. So consider downsizing. If you have $100,000 of equity, maybe half a million dollar portfolio, whatever, that's the math behind it. It is what it is. And finally, don't completely exit the stock market. I do run into a lot of um, older people who want to exit the stock market in some way. You just need that long-term return. Remember, you're probably going to be retired for, again, in our numbers, 20 to 25 years. That's a long time when stocks are up three years out of four. Do not completely exit the stock market. I know it can be bumpy, but in the long run, it will benefit you, especially in anything that pays good dividends and offers you a little bit less volatility than something like big tech stocks or something like that. So those are the points I would consider if you don't like the numbers I um, reeled off earlier. Please reach out if you have any questions. Your most valuable asset, of course, is your time. Thank you for watching. I wish you a very happy 4th of July. Be very careful, be safe. Don't be uh, drunk boating or playing with fireworks in your hand. No matter what your retirement plan is, you need your brain and your fingers, okay? Stay safe, have a good time, have a happy fourth. I'll see you next time for episode 70. Take care, bye. <music>